Whoa, what's up, YouTube? This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And this is the Clay Way. If this video is helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notifications, sharing my videos, and sending me them sweet -o thumbs up. If you've got a question for me, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger, and I'll happily try to answer it for my subscribers. Remember, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. So today, we're gonna put a dual alternator on a 3.0 Mercedes diesel Sprinter, and we're gonna show you that. We've got this kit right here that we purchased. Okay, so here's what came in our kit. We've got a tensioner, we've got a bracket, we've got various assorted shims, we've got the 280 amp alternator, we've got various assorted bolts, which we'll get into later, we've got a belt, these are the serpentine numbers. We've got another idler pulley right there. We have got this sweet old uh, voltage regulator, which will deliver clean power to our lithium battery. And we've got another pulley. In the kit as well, we have this adapter with the fuse inside it. I'm assuming if you wanna hook up something externally to the alternator, we're gonna end up using this. Uh, it doesn't say anything about it in the instructions, so we'll keep in mind that that's still here, and in case we need something that's fusible, we'll have this for it. So in the kit, we've got two 10 millimeter flat washers, two 10 millimeter lock washers. I've went ahead and wrote down all the torque specs that were supplied with the kit for these bolts, their lengths, so when you're installing them, you have that. This is a parts description of the parts that are included in the kit. Okay, we placed our sprinter up on jack stands. I didn't notice the intern used two different jack stands. So now we're gonna take a T25 and we're gonna remove the panels in the floor to get down to the battery. With the three screws removed, we can lift this trim panel off. Now we're gonna use a T30 Torx to remove four screws that are holding down our battery cover. You can just loosen these bolts and slide the cover back and raise it off. Now taking up the positive side battery cable, we're gonna loosen the 10 millimeter bolt nut. Now moving to the hood of the vehicle, we're gonna release the positive terminal and there's a little pushy down here on the bottom. Push that towards the passenger side, raise it up and it will release. Now we're going to remove the two electrical connectors on the top of the air box simply by pushing in the back, pushing the clip back and pulling the sensor plug off and then doing the same over here, pushing down on these two and pulling back on the connector. Now taking a flathead screwdriver, we're going to loosen the clamp to remove the snorkel inlet tube. Taking one hand and pulling this tube out, it will release from down there. Then next, we will raise up on the air box, unsecuring it from the rubber mounts and pulling it back towards us to slip it off of the brackets back there. Pulling back on the fan shroud radiator condenser cover, we're able to move it out of the way. If you don't replace this part after the completion of the job, it will make your air conditioning function improperly. Now we're gonna remove the coolant overflow hose. Now using an E10 or an eight millimeter, we will go down and remove these two bolts.
there's what seems to be like 10 to 15 different ways to remove a fan clutch off of a vehicle and there's only one way that I've done it that it has absolutely never failed me. One of the methods is, this is what's called a Lyle kit, and I'm gonna give you the part number just in case you guys want it. Good folks make good tools. Not gonna to use that, push that back to my kid's toy box. The fan clutch nut is actually 36 millimeters. Not gonna use it, once again, to the toy box. This, not gonna use that garbage. Not gonna use this garbage. And there's one other method that I actually like. It's my second favorite. You can take a pipe wrench and a crescent wrench because a crescent wrench will get up to 36 millimeters to hold out of the nut and you can hold the base of it. But the way that I do it only takes 10 seconds. Takes me less time than it did to explain all this to you is I'm gonna take a pick bit on the end of my air hammer. I'm gonna drive that sucker off there. You watch. To remove the fan, we're gonna go clockwise because the fins are pointed out like this and they scoop up the air and throw it this way. If the fins were pointed the other way, like this direction, then we would know the fan came off in a counterclockwise rotation or a regular thread. In this situation, it is reverse thread. And do this at the same time so you guys can see it. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. We do not totally need to unhook the fan. We just need to be able to unscrew it and move it to the top of the engine. Now reaching down along the side of here, we're going to release the fan shroud. We put our finger right there. We push up on that, and with our other two fingers, we're going to pull up on the fan shroud, pulling it out of the way to release it, and then it'll do that. And then we'll do the exact same procedure on the opposite side. Now that we have that loose, we can lift up our fan blade at the same time as we lift up our fan shroud, and then we'll be able to pull our fan shroud out of the way. First, we will take the fan shroud and move it up on the passenger side. Once we've got the fan shroud notch over the top of our coolant reservoir hose, we can start working on the driver's side. All right, so we've got this side up. Now we need to move it to the passenger side and get it around our hose which with the fan in the way, it's a little bit difficult, but it's possible because I've done it before. Now I can take my fan and I can put it over my engine assembly because it's not unhooked. And once again, we will work our passenger side over and pull our fan shroud out. So I'm just gonna cut the belt off because we no longer need it. Now we're gonna grab the two eight millimeter 30 bolts and we're gonna install them on the top of the bracket underneath the vehicle. Prior to installing the bolts, make sure you put a little bit of Loctite on the threads. This is the top of the bracket with the hole located at the bottom. We're gonna fit the bracket into these two top holes. Now using a 13 millimeter deep well, we're gonna put the bolt inside the socket Put the bracket into place and start the bolt in the top hole. Now we're going to grab the two 8mm by 35mm length bolts and put them in the bottom of the bracket. Once again, grabbing our 13mm deep well, we insert our lower bolts. 
according to the documents that I have, we tighten them down to 19 foot pounds, actually 18.75. I am also going to put the torque specifications at the end of the video, just in case I misread them for some weird reason. Make sure when you're working on anything, prior to snugging the bolts down, you start every single bolt in the hole at least a quarter way. Now we're gonna grab a six millimeter Allen along with the Allen bolt and insert it and tighten it down to 19 foot pounds. We're also gonna grab our tensioner and the eight millimeter by 50 length bolt. plus the three quarter inch spacer. The tensioner will be mounted onto the engine just like this. This will be facing the forward most part of the engine. So back towards you. First we will install the bolt. Then we will install the spacer behind the bolt. We are going to be installing the tensioner into this hole with the Allen screw and this hole with the bolt. At this point, we're going to grab a T55 and insert it into the hole that is for our tension assembly and move it up and down three times to set the shock on the tensioner. If we do not do this, we may have premature belt failure. Now we're gonna grab our 100 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolts, lock washers and washers and install our alternator. We're also gonna tighten these bolts down to 35 foot pounds. I'm going to disconnect my voltage regulator from my alternator so it is not dangling around. I thought I'd give you a little view of how things are looking. Okay, we have an idler pulley down here that we need to remove. And it is located right there. The belt rides over the top of it. So we need to take the serpentine belt off the main drive. Now we're taking a 17 millimeter. We're gonna put it on the end of our tensioner and turn it counterclockwise to remove our main serpentine belt. Taking a small pick tool or a screwdriver, we're going to pick off the front cover of our idler pulley. Now taking a T47, we're going to remove the center torx bolt on the idler pulley that we just removed the cap from. we need to assemble our tensioner assembly we're going to take this washer and we're going to put it through the center of this right there and it's going to fit down flush working with our tensioner assembly like this we're going to take this spacer this spacer the new pulley the old pulley and put them together like this with their eight millimeter, 90 millimeter long bolt. Notice how one side is silver and one side is red. We're gonna make sure that we insert our spacers into the red side so they will fit on there properly. And with this situation, the longer spacer end goes into the red side 
and then that goes together with our bushing, allowing the smaller end to fit together and make one unit that will work with one another without wobbling. Now we need to loosely put our original belt back in its factory location, but not securing it because we do not have the pulley down there yet. I am going to put a diagram of the belt routing for you up next. Now we're going to loosely install the second belt. And I'm going to put a description of that belt installation here. We're going to make sure it goes there and then goes behind the tensioner right down there. And it's also going to travel around the harmonic balancer right here. We're going to make sure it's on the top of this one right here. And then we're gonna install the tensioner assembly for this belt. We are now gonna need our 10 millimeter, 1.5 critch, 65 millimeter bolt, and our idler pulley. The idler pulley assembly is gonna fit on our arm just like this with our bolt going through the center. Do not forget to lock tight both bolts. Now we're going to insert our idler pulleys and we're going to ensure that the idler pulley belt, the top portion of the belt up where the tip of my fingers are right here, is down on this side of the idler pulleys and the belt that is behind it is on the top side of the idler pulleys. When installing the tensioner arm right here, make sure that this belt that goes around your original alternator is on top of the pulley. Make sure that this belt that goes to your new alternator is on the bottom of the pulley. Now we've removed our belt from our alternator as we slide this up in there. And he's gonna make sure that the belt is closer to the harmonic balancer, like I stated before, and that the other belt is on the top of the flat pulleys as he installs that bolt up there. Now taking our other idler pulley, we're gonna have our shim spacer installed there, and we're gonna put our spacer on the back side. And we're going to make sure that our idler pulley is in between the center of the belts and mount it to the post of the alternator. Now taking a T55, we're going to stick it in the tensioner assembly tension location located right here. Now we're going to go ahead and start snugging up our bolts. I'm not going to tighten everything up until I get everything assembled where I want it to be, but I am going to snug them up and then we will torque everything down. That is a 13 millimeter bolt and this is a 15 millimeter bolt. This is 13. The alternator bolts are 17 millimeter. Now we have a ratchet through the brace of the radiator and are going to use the T55 to move the tension to the belt. Making sure before you release the tensioner that your belt is centered on the top and the bottom of your pulleys. Taking your hand and pushing up on the tensioner will release its shock lock. Then your alternator belt will be tight and secure. Grabbing a 17 millimeter, we're gonna reattach the main belt and set the serpentine tension. Now, if you're like me and you've taken the belt and only left it off of that pump, you can push it on and release the tension on the tensioner. Taking our fingertips 
and making sure that our belt is on all of our pulleys and centered in them is a good recommendation. Since Dakota's down there, I'm gonna go ahead and have him pass me up the wires behind the alternator and pull them through so I can attach my regulator to my firewall right there. Now we're gonna reinstall our fan blade. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna set both pieces down at the same time. While installing the fan shroud, I'm going to make sure that it's going into its proper location at the bottom of the radiator. I generally work from the passenger side to the driver's side, moving it down on the passenger side, and then switching to the driver's side to put it down inside there. I did have to bang it with my hand to get it past the radiator hose a little bit and bent the radiator hose. Now we're going to hang the fan to the water pump and make sure it starts to spin on there. Now using a 36 millimeter wrench, we're going to start to tighten up our fan blade. To install the fan shroud, it actually has two different sets of pockets. One right down there on the bottom, and then one right up here on both sides. So all we have to do is pick up the shroud tilt it backwards and put it in its location and clip it down. Now we're going to install the condenser cover. Now we're going to reinstall the two screws that we removed, one for the holder and one for the other wire that connects to our fan. Now we're going to mount the voltage regulator up along the firewall. On the firewall, I've already installed one self-tapping screw. Putting my unit into position and then pulling down on it and installing the second self-tapping screw down there will ensure that it's located properly and works very well. After installing my first screw, I will set the other screw near the top of the hole and drive it in with the self-tapper. Because of the fiber material behind the regulator, I'm able to push it in, insert it, and it will hold it as I install the screw. Now I will take my main connector and plug it into my circuit board, pushing it down securely. Now taking my smaller red wire, I will put it down to post number 9 on my regulator. Now taking my black and my red, my positive and my negative, I will put the red one on the right. And the black one on the left. These posts are indicated as five and six. Black going on five, red going on six. Now I'm gonna mount the fuse boxes that are supplied. And when I mount them, I'm going to mount them on the side of the air box here using the same self tappers that I used, but I'm going to push up on the wires so there's a little bit of slack in here if I have to remove them without having to remove my fuses. I will mount them something like this. Now taking the remaining portion of the wiring harness, we are going to zip tie it to stationary locations here in the engine bay. Anywhere that's stationary and doesn't move and is not brittle or will break. Now I've taken a zip tie and I've tied up my line. I put a little cue in it, a little squiggly, and I've tied it to my heater hose lines and then these lines here. We have got our fuses mounted down, and I think the install turned out excellent. Hey, what's going on? So we're out here in Livonia, Michigan, and we're working on the Sprinter again. Uh, put about 600 miles on the Sprinter, and it threw the aftermarket belt for our alternator. Here was the situation. I came all the way out here, even though 
round trip, it's about six hours. Um, I don't normally do this for folks, but Sean's kind of become a friend, so we want to make sure he's taken care of. And on top of that, I didn't want some other mechanic looking at it and going, this dipshit did this, this dipshit did that. I didn't want to have that. But when I got out here, there's absolutely nothing wrong with any of the stuff that I did. Nothing's came loose. The alternator's tight. The bracket's tight. The tensioner seems to feel tight. I don't know why it did this, but I guess that's why they give you two belts inside the box. So in a couple weeks, Sean is going to be back and we're going to be installing the lithium batteries into the Sprinter. So you guys watch out for that. Hopefully you folks enjoyed the install and you thought the video was really good. Uh, I think it turned out great. Join us next time when we put a dual alternator system on that for a budget and don't have to spend two grand plus our time. If this video was helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notifications, sharing my videos, and giving me them sweet old thumbs up. God bless, have the best of days, and remember, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. As promised, I wanted to share the torque specs and what I got them for and where I got them from.